Please remain standing for the reading of the Gospel this morning. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of John. It's in the 6th chapter beginning with verse 51. I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let's join together in, in uh, the uh, modern affirmation this morning for our affirmation of faith. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Seated. Let's sing together the old rugged cross.
Would you join me in just giving Ann some appreciation for the way she plays that game? Thank you so much. You can forget the work and just play the piano. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Do you hear all those amens? Yeah, we just love to hear that. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we continue to live in these very interesting times. But you should know that. Jesus walked in interesting times as well. He showed us how to manage through stress by turning to you in prayer. Showed us how to deal with conflict sometimes by walking away, turning the other cheek, walking a mile in the other man's shoes. He also showed us that it makes a difference when we pray People are healed. Miracles do happen. So today as we gather together, we pray for our friends, some of them here among us right now that are going through treatments for cancer and other diseases. We pray for them to receive healing from doctors and medicines and whatever ways that you want to send them. Today we also lift up prayers for the people of Haiti. the struggles, the destruction. And even as we speak, another storm heads toward Florida, and who knows, maybe another one is coming our way. So much to worry about. We get frantic. And yet, when we sing that song that we just sang, we know that it is the old rugged cross. It is you who guides us. It is you who are with us. And even in the most trying times, you've promised to never leave us. So God, it isn't a matter of your presence with us. It's a matter of our awareness of your presence. Today, as we gather here to pray for our friends, to pray for the world, and to worship you, help us to feel your presence. We count on the Holy Spirit to come into this place, surround us, guide us, open our hearts to be open to you. We are thankful for Jesus and the many things he taught us, especially the simple way that he taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. As we prepare to hear from Psalm 34 this morning, uh, A.J. is going to lead us in singing, Lead on, O King Eternal, and you certainly may remain seated as we sing.
Now this morning our scripture reading comes from Psalm number 34. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh, children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You might think that's kind of out of context there where it says the young lions suffer want and hunger. A few years ago when we were at Big Bend, we had the occasion to go and, uh, to a ranger lesson where they taught us about mountain lions. Uh, they have a lot of mountain lions there, a good number of them, uh, but you don't see them very often. Well, right before we had been there, uh, I think a few months before we had been there, there was a young boy walking from the motel over the restaurant and a mountain lion attacked him in the crosswalk. It's very irregular and unusual, but it is because of what this scripture says young lions want, because here's the deal, particularly for male lions, they get to stay with mama for a couple of years. And then it's time for them to go on and move away. And dad doesn't want them to eat in his territory. In fact, won't allow it. And so they get really hungry. And they get really scary. Because they have to go. And they have to, it's like dad's kicking them out. And, and um, this is, you know, in the animal world, it's a pretty serious thing if you're a lion, I guess. So what's happening here is it says young lions want because they they want so many. How many of us, when we were young people, had this long list of things we wanted? Yep. <laughs> yep. All these dreams we had. You remember when somebody went, I remember Kenrick. Y'all know who Kenrick was? She asked me one time on TV what I wanted to be when I grew up. I told him I wanted to be a fire truck. <laughs> Fire trucks are pretty cool. <laughs> I didn't grow up to be a fire truck. I remember so many times uh, I had when I was a police officer. I had a friend. His name was Red. He, he was married to I don't remember his wife's name, and uh, they had several children. One in particular was four years old. His name was Charlie. We went one time to Poncho's. You all remember Poncho's, right? They still, we still got one in Houston over here. Uh, on Alameda Mall. Kathy and I love to go to Poncho's. If you're anxious to go, just let us know. We'll meet you there. But uh, anyway, we were, we were at Poncho's and we were eating and Charlie was in a high chair and Charlie got, you know how they cut uh, 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 jello into little squares? Yep. And it comes in a little bowl. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yep. Well, Charlie took it out of the bowl and smeared it all over his tray. And then he smeared it all over his head. Oh. Oh, yeah. And then he got out of the high chair and come and smeared it all over me. <laughs> and I said, I'll never have a child do anything like that. <laughs> and God will get you for that. <laughs> Amen. You know, we have all these expectations and wants. And sometimes they take us so far away from the reality of what we really desire. I think what it says down here a little further in this passage is really what we want. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Does that fit with y'all? Do we, we, we look forward to many days to enjoy good? And you say, well, preacher, talk to us about good. Quit talking to us about COVID-19 and, and all this other stuff. You know, I would love to quit talking to you about it. And one of these days, we'll be talking about something else, whatever the next thing is. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, we're all in this boat together. We just got to do the best we can to get through. We can't stop. We can't hide in a room. I don't think you have to worry about there being any more lockdowns. I don't think that's going to happen. We just have to do. 
Some of you don't remember, many of you do remember polio when it came about in the old days. I know Philip probably does, and I do. We had to go get a polio shot or vaccine. I don't remember anybody having a choice. They lined us up at Garden Villas Elementary School, and the line went, would have easily gone from here to Spencer Highway. And we had to get a polio vaccine. And you know what? We wanted to get it because all of us had friends that had polio. These things are complicated. I don't have all the answers. But I know we get so caught up in that stuff that sometimes we forget that God is still the God of the ages. That's why we sing that a while ago, God of the ages. God was the God of the people when Jesus' friends and, and people were suffering from leprosy. It was a big deal. People are still suffering from stuff and God is still with us no matter what. Yep. It isn't a matter of whether God's with us. It's our awareness of what God wants us to do. There's an a, a easy kind of silly saying. It says, you know, we're tuned in to W-I-F-W-I-I-F-M. I know most of us don't listen to the radio that much anymore because we can watch 100 channels on TV. But W-I-I-F-M is what's in it for me. Look, I'm not concerned with what's in it for you. I'm concerned with what's in it for God. And we should all be doing that. Amen. What's in it for God? What does God call us to do? And sometimes we have to make tough decisions. I, I can tell you, we've got some in front of us. I, are we going to do pumpkins? I don't know. I don't know. You know, do, do, you, do you put out an edict that says we need to wear a mask or not? Somebody, somebody's going to get mad. It, it's just the way it is. But as my hero in life, Mr. Spock, said, not Dr. Spock, Mr. Spock from Star Trek, if you all know what that is, you need to catch up. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Spock said, it's for the good of the many, not the few. And that's the world we live in right now. Public schools are for the good of the many, not the few. Amen. There are always exceptions. The red light they put up at the corner is for the good of us all, not the few that want to run it. I mean, we've got all these restrictions in our life. But this recipe right here, this recipe, is what I call simple faith. Wesley said it, you know, do no harm. Start your day doing no harm. The, remember the Salvation used, Army used to have a slogan, slogan said, doing the most good. When you have a choice, and you always do, to be angry, hostile, bitter, or critical, be kind. When you have a choice on whether to be upset, angry, and mad, and spreading talk about people, be kind. And we always have that choice. And I want to tell you, friends, it doesn't take that many people to change the dynamic of a big room when somebody starts to demonstrate kindness. I told this story last night, too, and I was, uh, as most, many of you know, for there was a time back in, in the 60s, I worked for the Boy Scouts of America one summer. I made a whopping salary of $30 a month plus room and board. And I made some critical errors and got in some trouble and and they didn't kick me out. They just gave me some counseling and told me how to straighten out. At the end of the summer, there was a guy, his name was Ralph. We called him Doc Widener. It was stressful for me. I'd never had responsibility really before. I'd never had to deal with all that stuff. And I had all these things that I had to keep track of and do. I was 16 years old. I mean, good grief, what do you expect? And at the end of the summer, Ralph, Doc Widener, came over to me and he said, I just want to tell you, friend. He said, if you ever ever need a reference call me he said I know a lot of stuff didn't go right some of the stuff went wrong but I want to give you some encouragement today that you're worth it and you did okay and I'll give you a reference I didn't think too much about that but a few weeks ago I wanted to look up Doc Widener this guy was a, a war hero he was had all kinds of accolades tons of things was very wealthy and this guy found this little 16-year-old kid that was struggling and became an encourager. You know, that's exactly what I think this psalm is about. I think that's what Jesus tells us to do is when you have a choice, be kind. Sometimes we have to do things we don't want to do. Let me be clear. I, I, I got in an argument with somebody a few weeks ago this. Jesus 
would have liked to have avoided the cross. He prayed three times for you people that are technical to have this removed, this cup removed. And you know what? He got absolute silence. <laughs> And he had to go ahead and do it. And that's the way sometimes prayer works, right? Garth Brooks sings a song about unanswered prayers. Sometimes we want what we think we want, and God wants us to have something entirely different. And God will get us there if we'll just have an awareness and presence of God's Spirit. Amen. The problem isn't where God is. I, I, I get irritated. I, I, it really frustrates me when I read on Facebook, I'm praying for God to come back to Pasadena. Good grief, friends. If God is not in Pasadena, I don't want to be here. Amen. God doesn't need to come back. We need to turn back to God. Yep. The moral compass of this country needs to turn back to God. Amen. Now, we've got plenty of godly people. In fact, the godly people will outnumber the ungodly people. But they make more noise than we do. Did you ever notice that? They're louder. You ever heard that deal of squeaking wheel gets all the grease? Yep. Well, they squeak more than we do. I'm not saying we need to get up and stand up and, and riot. I'm simply saying we need to go out and be agents of the living God in our actions, in our voices, in the words we say, and the way we treat people. And I want to tell you, it can change a lot of things. It can change a community. It can change a group that you're in. Just as easily as it can go the other way. You ever been in one of those groups where you get there and somebody starts talking, maybe they talk about somebody that's not there? That's a sin, right? You're not supposed to do that, but they do that. And then pretty soon somebody chimes in and, and before long we're a mob saying, crucify him, crucify him. <laughs> Wesley had a note to say about it. He defined evil speaking in his notes, which y'all don't care about that, but he wrote notes about everything. He said, evil speaking is that's injurious, false, or deceitful. In particular, evil speaking is the relating of a fault of an absent person to others, even if the fault is real. Sinful pride often motivates this vicious activity and talebearers often feel entitled to repeat the sins of others because they mistakenly believe they're being godly in doing so. In order to avoid this harmful practice, believers carefully should carefully follow the counsel of Christ. Do you know he told us how to solve those problems? It's in Matthew. Many of you know those. Matthew 18, 15 through 17, three steps. Somebody's doing something that's really wrong, point it out to them. Privately. That's like one to one. If that doesn't make any difference or if it's not resolved, then bring along a couple of other people. If it's still not resolved, only then would you go to the whole church. In other words, we need to take a breath and not react. Not be so quick to be critical. Hostile. I find it uncomfortable, really. Now, I'm not naive. I know that everybody's not going to agree about everything. I'm okay with that. I've got some very good friends that have some very diverse views about many things. And I think that's what makes the world a one fun place to be because frankly if y'all all thought just like I did I probably wouldn't want to hang out with you <laughs> I like a little diversity I like a little controversy sometimes I like a little discussion I think those are fun things but at the end of the day whatever the resolution of that is I want you to know whether we had a, a, a gentle soft discussion or maybe a little bit of heated one at the end of the day, we walk away. I still love you and we're still friends. I don't expect people, I'm not trying to change people's influence to my way. I don't even, I'm not trying to do that about your theology. I, I think most of the time your theology is between you and God. Now, 
I can tell you, if you only stay home and you only read what you read and you never discuss it with anybody, you're only going to think what you think. So sometimes you need to hang out with some people that think a little differently than you and you might hear a different perspective. And you know what? Some of the times it makes sense. And I believe it's out of that context, like in the women's Bible study or the men's Bible study, that we get together. We don't all agree about a lot of stuff, but we read God's Word. We all hear it differently. And what comes out of that is God's will. Probably not at all what the leader expected to happen that day. I can't tell you the number of times I put together a message and I start to deliver it and it gets off the rails somewhere and, and I'm thinking at the end of the day that was the most God awful sermon I ever put together and I try to duck my head and get out of the church and there'll be somebody running to me and saying, you spoke to me today. You see, God is the one doing the talking. He's using me, He's using you, but it's God's world we live in, not ours. This isn't our church, it's God's church. And as long as it is God's church, we're going to find ways to deal with the stuff God wants us to deal with. Some of the time, we're going to like it. And some of the time, we're not. I don't often preach from the Psalms. You know, there's 150 Psalms. And out of those 150 psalms, there's probably a third of them that are kind of praise psalms, about a third that are lamenting psalms. And there's some where, where the psalmist is just angry. And, and I, I don't know how many times I've heard people say, well, it's not okay to be angry with God. Why not? Do you think your God is so small that you could be mad at Him and He's going to abandon you like your friend did? No. God is okay with you being upset and angry because if you're talking to God, you're closer to Him than the people that aren't. Don't be afraid. I always get tickled about that. You know, it's like we think we can duck our head and do stuff and Jesus doesn't know. <laughs> I mean, think about that. Crazy. If we believe God is who God is, and we believe our relationship with God is what God's is. And we believe that the scripture's right when it says he knew us when we were knitted together in our mother's womb. Then how do you think we think we can hide from him? So we're deluded. In AA we call that denial. I got news for you. Denial is not a river in Egypt. <laughs> it's something we all do. And the relationship between us and God is very private, very personal, in our own individual hearts, but it's not secret. And so when it becomes real to us, when it really becomes real to us, then doing this last part becomes much easier. Depart from evil. And do good. Seek peace. And the last one is, friends, it says pursue it. What do you think that means? To me, that means we don't only just say we'd like to have peace. We do everything in our power as Christians to chase it. That's what pursue means. So we're chasing peace. Now, I don't know about you, but my day's a whole lot better when I chase peace than when I chase conflict. Or when I chase bitterness. I've had those days. How about y'all? Some days I'm just bitter. Some days, sometimes we're, what was it, cranky and don't even know it. <laughs> so somebody told Kathy last night she was cranky. She isn't cranky. She's always that way. <laughs> That's not nice. You know, but, but the, the question is, do people see us as pursuing peace? Because that's we're supposed to be the peacekeepers, the peacemakers. We've been called by Almighty God. We've answered the call when we came forward and got baptized or when we professed our faith. We said, we'll be with you like you've been with us and we trust that you're right when you say, Lo, I will be with you to the end of the age. And yet, when we walk away from that, we can live out a million other things other than that faith.
Wesley said, do no harm. Do all the good you can. And then he said, stay in love with God. Now, he, that's the short version. The way you stay in love with God is, number one, you attend holy conferencing or worship. You know, read the scriptures. You pray. And you go to communion as often as you can. So it's staying in love with God takes work too. A lot more work for us than it does for God to stay in love with us. So today it's a really short scripture. It's a really short few words. But I want to read it again in the context more of this conversation. Oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones. For those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life to come its many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. I was at a little lost today because Buddy brought me such good jokes last time. <laughs> um, and I've used them up, Sue. I, I, he's going to have to cut me some more. I've used them over and over. They were really good. But this one actually relates to the message today. I want you to hear this. There's an Irishman. He's trying to find a parking space out of the local pub on a busy evening, but he can't find one. He looks skyward and he says, Lord, if you'll grant me the space, I'll come to church every Sunday, just like a good Christian should. Lo and behold, a space opened up right in front of him. He looks skyward and says, never mind, God, I found a space. <laughs> I really relate to that prayer. How about you? I mean, to that story, that joke. I pray for God to fix it and fix it and fix it. And God's fixed it ten times. And I'm sitting there saying, boy, I sure did a good job. I would pat myself on my back. My shoulder hurts. <laughs> I think this is one of the most serious parts of Christianity, this simple faith. We make it way too complicated. We go into all these things about, oh, have you done this? Or do you do this? Or can you read the, the Apostles' Creed out loud? Or do you know this? Or have you memorized all the hymns in the hymn book? All those things were done to me when I was a kid. Really, is comes down to do you love your neighbor like you love yourself? Really, do you do unto others as how you'd have them do unto you? And as according to the psalmist who wrote this way, way, way before Jesus was on earth, do you resist evil and deceit and bitterness and do good? Do you want peace? And do you want it enough to pursue it? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When I was a, a young lad, we went to Garden Fellows Methodist Church. The preacher I remember the most, we had several, but it was a guy named Eugene Bennett. <coughs> We had a music director there that I took piano lessons from for about, I don't know, 10 years. And uh, his name was Jerry Nelson. He was a doctor of ministry. He was a very well-trained musician. We had phenomenal choirs. And we had these difficult pieces that the choir sang. And uh, so Jerry Nelson would pick out the songs. And most of the time, Reverend Bennett would tolerate them. And when we got down to the very last hymn, for the day, like today, we're going to close worship and go home. They would start playing, the organist would start playing something. Mr. Nelson would get the choir up. Eugene Bennett turned around and said, Whoop, we're not going to sing that. We're going to sing Blessed Be the Tide of Pines. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to do today. As you're able, would you stand as we sing Blessed Be the Tide of Pines? You know, uh, we're not passing an offering plate during worship. The basket's in the back. We're grateful for your gifts, tithes, and offering. Let's sing together.
everybody has a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy if you can. And just know that the same God that created the heavens and the earth that can somehow or another make that North Star stay right where it is all the time created you and me. And for a purpose that we have yet to live out as people of the way, the followers of Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Thank <laughs> you.